Happy weekend, everyone. How has been your weekend? Yes. How is it going at your hand? Yeah, it's another opportunity to learn, relearn, and unlearn. Yes, it's still your favorite YouTube channel, Jinsei Matters with Roy. Yes, thank you very much for your support, for always creating time to watch our videos. We really appreciate your love and everything you've been trying to do, everything you're trying to do to support this channel. Thank you very much. So if you have been following us, if you've been following uh, this channel for some weeks, you'll discover that, yes, we've been having a, a marriage series on before you get to know who your partner is, should you consider impressions or emotions? What to do if you're looking at impression or emotions or possibly if you really needed, if you really need the two. Also, we've had a discussion on the things you need to consider, the things you need to check just before you are joined, just before you say, yes, I do, to the love of your life. <laughs> All right, okay. And really, trust me, those sessions were really, really practical. They've been insightful. They've been really, really interesting. And if you missed those series, kindly check them up on our YouTube channel, JSA Matters with Roy. And today we'll, is still going to be a continuation from where we stopped. Yeah, today we'll be considering the oversights, things that we don't really get to discuss before we start the marriage journey. Yeah, you know, during preparations, everybody is like, oh, okay, let's just get married. Let's just get married. All of that things, we'll get them sorted out. Uh, along the way but then they get into the marriage and they're like oh, really i can't imagine we didn't get to talk about these things before we were joined so this is the essence of today's discussion and we've had we, we we've had our special guest uh doctor and dr mrs uh bolaji sharing with us their experiences and practical life uh issues practical uh examples that you will really understand and really it's been very interesting having them on the channel with us we are really very grateful thank you very much sir and ma for your time and for always being there to share your experiences with us so Today we'll continue from where we stopped, but then today we have only Doctor Mrs. Bolaji with us on the platform. Uh, Doctor Bolaji is not here today, but his wife, beautiful mama, <laughs> she's here with us. Thank you very much, Ma. We really appreciate your love, your support, and always been there to share your experience with us. So today, I bring to you. No <coughs> other person but Dr. <laughs> Mrs. Alaba Bolaji. Thank oh, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. And I bring greetings from my husband. Like, he wouldn't have wanted to miss this for any reason, but it's just important that he travels at this time. And so, um, assuming he's not on, on a flight we would have been able to network and just broadcast from wherever we are and still come together but yeah you didn't have a choice is in the air so that's why <laughs> it's okay no problem it's, it's, i believe so, i believe and, that god will use you for us today amen. and those things <laughs> that he would have shared with us on the platform today you're going to come out boom just from amen <laughs> amen amen because i believe god, god is the one yeah. <laughs> you speak for him <laughs> thank yeah. you very much yeah, and so to much. all our all for all to all our viewers out there if you can see me well you can hear me audibly please let me know you are there you can see us and wherever you're watching us from i really appreciate it and if you have any concerns you have any questions just drop your questions in the comment section and also say hello to us in the comment section really appreciate it let's know that yes 
you are here. Even if you'll be watching the replay, we'll still appreciate it by saying, yes, thank you. I saw the video. Okay. <laughs> In fact, just say hello to our special guest, you know, just to encourage us. Thank you very much. Okay. Be, um, thank you. Without wasting much of our time, let's just dive into the discussion right away. So before us today on the table, before us today, we have oversights in marriage. Those little, little things, the tiny details that we tend to forget, we tend to ignore when preparing for marriage. All right. Okay. Over to you, Ma. Or yes. Let's hear yeah. from you first. Right? <laughs> During the course yeah, of the discussion, so we'll be putting the onions, yeah. the green pepper, <laughs> the red pepper, the garlic, the ginger, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will appreciate that so much. And I will also appreciate you. Like, um, So thank you so much for having us on this program it's been an interesting journey and all the topics have been very interesting and talking about oversight in marriage I, um, a question that i asked myself is is it possible to not have an oversight because really oversight is not intentional it is not an intentional act there are just those things that um you just feel mm, we both know or we just assume yeah everybody understands or it's no big deal or there's not like it is an intentional heart and um i bet to say that it's definitely going to happen like it's not possible that you have um i've even known people who had metusela courtship and i when i say metusela courtship about 16 years of courtship that like a lifetime of courtship yet they had situations that they're just like, hmm, I didn't know that, or we really didn't, didn't talk about this, or we really didn't consider this. So there would definitely be an oversight in marriage. But um, I'm grateful that God inspired you to want us to discuss this, because sometimes these oversights leads to big issues. Um, meanwhile, in most cases, um, having a broad understanding of what marriage is about and understanding of human beings in general or understanding of all that God wants to bring out of our relationship are enough to make us know that um, there is no oversight that cannot be mended. There is no oversight that cannot be talked about now. There's no oversight that we cannot approach and not um, necessarily lead to divorce or end our marriage. So. Um, I'm going to say that generally, like I said before, oversights are not intentional. They are mistakes on our part. But most cases, we tend to um, put our couple or, or the next person, our spouse, we tend to put the blame on them when actually it is our mistake. So let me give a, an example. Like even now that you're married, now that i'm married there are situations that we talk about something and um my husband is like but you didn't tell me that and i'm like but you never asked <laughs> now that is an oversight it is my whole mistake i am the one that forgot to give all the other details that are necessary for a better understanding of the scope or the better understanding of what this is about but in when that is brought up a quick defense is but you never asked and when we put up that attitude of you didn't ask then we are not able to address the situation then it can become a conflict it can become something that can lead to oh it means you'll be hiding something from me it means you didn't when it was actually an oversight so so many things will happen in marriage and as we progress in marriage in our relationship as well like there would probably be an oversight like i introduce a friend to my husband oh this is a friend i just met this this and that and one day you are saying something and, but you didn't tell me that she's this or oh, that kind of like there are just so many things that will continue to happen but i would say that there are some um situations that are really challenging and that I believe if I'm going to give an advice as a first step to go into this is when you go into marriage, just have that made up mind that there will be things that you didn't talk about. There will be things that you didn't plan for. There will be things you didn't consider. There will be things that you just thought everybody understand or it wasn't necessary. And being an oversight 
it can lead to conflict, but we should be able to address it soon by the only weapon we have, which is communication. Like, talk about it now. Now that it has come up, let us talk about it. Let us address it and resolve it amicably. Um, there was a program we did um, while, when we were still at West Lafayette some time ago. It was at the fellowship and just couples. Then these older couples came around and they asked all the couples that were present, what were our first shock in marriage? <laughs> wow. Now, I am going to say my example, the example that I gave and another example that someone gave. And I want to make that example like it was funny. This was an example someone gave. He said, well, in his own family, the parents are highly professional people in medical practice, husband and wife, so they're always busy. So breakfast was never a meal to actually consider. Like you wake up in the morning, if you want to have something, go get something kind of an attitude. That was how they were raised. So, but when he got married, the wife setting is, you know, a typical like daddy is a teacher, mommy is something, kind of those families where everybody eats in the morning before they leave home. Then we have gone to school with our lunch. We come back in the evening, we make dinners. So, so a very, when it comes to meals, very organized meal setting. So it was like when they got married and his wife would just like, um, time to eat breakfast. It would just be like, well, I'm not hungry. And for the wife, it's like, why would you not be like breakfast is natural now this is a complete oversight on the worst part of course we say it publicly oh three meals per day breakfast lunch and dinner and it is just the assumption that everywhere in every family they eat breakfast lunch and dinner but that is not it so that is a very simple case of something that can happen and it will be like what what are you talking about and you know that was a good case because it is the wife that is from a strongly organized male family assuming it is the wife that is from a family where they don't eat breakfast and she wakes up in the morning and she's not even thinking like it is not even in her schedule that we should make breakfast and the husband is the opposite i believe it will become a big issue because it will be like you don't want to give me breakfast <laughs> and it will be like what are you talking about and you know there are situations like i remember like in my communication as i'm growing i have learned not to say everybody or everywhere or everyone knows because sometimes we generalize so much because we think everybody knows so there are so many oversight that we happen like in my own case an example that i remember well was my first shock when we got married was uh, in my husband's family evening time was just time for them like everybody's out in the evening they're talking they're chatting sharing about their day and all of those things like they like such talks and irony of it is they do it on the traditional African mats. Well, some people can see it, but mostly everybody's on the mat talking. And for one, me, I don't even lie on a mat. Even when I go to the village for evangelistic purpose, I sleep on the bench because <laughs> the mat is too low for me. Of course, we were using mat in my family to like maybe talk in the evening, but I, I was just never that kind of person. So when we got married, like our first week or so, maybe first or two weeks, we were in my parents' in-laws house and it was time for their normal evening, like the first day after Sunday service, like the paparazzi is gone, now it's normal family time. And I was in the room. And then I just had my mother-in-law knock. So I'm like, come in, mommy. That kind of, she came in and she's like, am I missing my family? Am I sad? Am I and i was just looking like um what happened <laughs> and she's like you are not outside talking with us i'm like oh <laughs> i can spend 24 hours on the bed reading or doing something i'm not just that kind of person but i was like now it's my action communicated an entirely different message from what i was used to but that is just like a shock to me now, I've been to their house several times. I've seen them doing it. But I was just never a part of it and just never thought that it was something that could communicate a different thing. So, yeah, so many things will happen. We'll have money to talk about. 
oversight on money matters like we re we usually thank god that counseling like this are going on but we usually don't talk about how do we spend money how do we manage our earnings um um in-laws how do we manage taking care of in-laws children how many do we want to have how do we want to have them when do we want to have them ambitions and career goals like different career different what is your plan what do you want to go for um are we relocating are we staying back here are we continuing where we are are we pursuing a different dream um what church do we go now like what kind of church do you feel like there are just so many things we don't talk about just because um you just get married right so we just think everything is going to work out so i don't know if i should continue to go into specific details or allow you to ask session because i've oh, spoken for you it's okay a long time. i'm really <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marcela. Watching from the US. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, okay. it's just oh, thank you very much, <laughs> Mrs. And also, <laughs> yeah, like you said, Ma, about the issue of coming together in the evening to gist and talk about other things. Yeah, it's really a great one. You know, okay. Let me just allow you to continue. Then okay. <laughs> I would yeah. like to share some examples. <laughs> yeah. So you can go ahead, Ma. um okay, thank you. So I want to first of all bring um common issues that causes problems in relationships. I think that everybody will be we agree that money is one big topic. Mm. How do we spend the money we are making? And you know, in most cases it was just never an issue when we were not married so when we were still in courtship like okay he buys a gift for me i buy something for him oh, oh it can even happen that okay i'm enrolling in a program and i don't have enough money maybe i want to pursue a master's degree we're not married yet i don't have enough money i've paid my tuition oh uh, my fiance can help and say okay i'm giving you this amount of money to support you and stuff like that we may be of course we will definitely have money issues um interacting on money matters before marriage like when preparing for marriage um i'm getting this i'm buying that we'll definitely have talks about that but the issue is we really don't usually address how we handle our money once we are together and most of the time uh we tend to want to embrace the system that we have seen our parents use so sometimes that becomes um a difficult thing for somebody to to reason well with so for example if i'm from a home where um all that i see my mom do is yes sir um yes sir and <laughs> every money is going to to my daddy now when you talk common pause well it may not have a string to me but for someone who has never seen that or for someone who has only heard bad stories about that, if you mention common, not even putting pause, it's like, hmm, don't touch the devil's head. <laughs> <laughs> Just let go of this matter. I remember there was a time that our church in Nigeria then that we were attending brought up the issue of common pause in church. The kind of opera it caused, I was shocked. Because I was like, but we are talking to Christians. Like, these are Christians, you know? there was actually a man in the church that said i'll say it in yoruba and try to translate it to english as much as i can try he said like god will never forbid me to wait on my wife before i fe got, get fed and she was at he was addressing the issue of common post so he sees common post like looking up to my wife to supply our needs it was very very strange to him now, some men want their wife to contribute. They are like, ah, I can't be the only one bearing this body. Go and meet. Um, you, you should tell me what you are going to, what need you are going to meet and have talks around that. So there are different kind of cultural beliefs, um, family training or bringing stories that people have heard that has formed a lot of conception of how money should be handled. But most of the time, um, we tend to overlook it or push it till when we get married and believe that things are going to sort themselves out i have heard of stories like don't do common pause because if you do common pause even to buy ordinary pants you know people say even to buy ordinary pants as a woman you will be waiting on your husband mm. and i'm always like so 
<laughs> Why should I be waiting on my husband even saying come on first? But people just have different ideas. But this is an issue that should be addressed right from the beginning. Because most of the time, what I see is you never know what will happen. At all. How to marry your wife can get a promotion and she becomes like your salary becomes very meager compared to hers. Then you start thinking, no, she's not doing enough. And she has the money. What is she doing with her money? How is she spending her money? What does she... And there are cases like I've seen different people, the wife going to build a house by herself just because she has tried to push her husband to be like, eh, let's build something better. And the husband is like, I cannot afford it. And because the husband cannot afford it, instead of the of them since they don't join post and the husband does not see a reason why they should the husband feels well we don't get a new house because i cannot afford it and the wife is like i'm tired of living here and she goes to spend her money to build what she wants and eventually it appears like the husband is chasing a the wife is chasing b and it begins, it continues to lead to conflict because it was never addressed. So money matter is a serious oversight. And for anybody that is listening to this broadcast, you are not married yet. It is time to talk about it. When you have a partner, talk about it. Have a common understanding of what you want or what is important to you. Like we have different makeups, but there is none of the ways of spending money that cannot work for your family as long as it is your agreement. I have seen people who the husband spends his own money, the wife spends her whole money, and they have lived happily ever after because they have a common understanding of this is what will work for us and this is how we want to spend our money. And for some people, it is daddy and mommy, we contribute 60% of our income. The other 40% is for whatever you want to use. So there are so many like different things that have worked for different people. But for it to work and not cause conflict, we need to address it. We need to talk about it. We need to address it into all details. How do we want to do it? Um, like there are so many things that happen with money. Like in my own case, a common post was not even a topic of conversation for my parents because I'm from a polygamous home. Like, how do you do common post with a polygamous man? Like, <laughs> it doesn't appear like an option at all, except we want to serve you. <laughs> yeah, so common post was never an issue with my parents. Like, there's no way they could have handled common post. Then my dad. My dad was like, I helped you. Like, it's just like everybody knows my dad is the financier of the home. Like, we need something that they provide it. Mommy's making her money, but the thing is, she's fitting all these little, little details that eventually become almost more expensive than what daddy's allowances can handle. But mm. that is just a process that worked for them. And um, it was like that. But for me, when coming into marriage, um, my idea of it is common pause. I don't want to bother myself with how much, like, I just don't like anxiety that comes with money matters of, have we paid for this? When are we doing this? I'm just not interested in all of that. So I'm always just like, mm, <laughs> I don't have interest. Just undo it the way you want to undo it, the way you see best. So on money matters, I don't want money anxiety at all. But that is me. It can't work for everybody that um some people have uh been used to I want this for myself, I want to be in control of this. So if that is what works for you, just talk around it, just converse. What will be the best? How should we handle money? So that is on money matters, and something very related to that is in-laws as well. Um, like in some family they maybe the dad died early and the woman has suffered and labored and labored and labored on this child now the children have some form of uh responsibility or loyalty that once i hit it like a child like for me as a girl let me use myself as an example if i'm growing up there once i hit my jackpot i am going to take care of my mother now i've heard so many people say that and it is as if 
marriage did not even come into their conception of when i start making money what just comes in is i'm going to help my mother she has suffered a lot um god will bless me i'm going to build her a house i'm going to help her with my siblings i'm going to do this i'm going to do that but it was just not the idea it, marriage just didn't come like something that can influence that it just didn't occur that when you get married things can change and for example if i now get engaged to someone that well both parents are doing pretty great they send me to school where i will send something to them but not that um it, the the child does not just have the same level of commitment that i have now if we get married together and we don't have a genuine down to heart hard conversation about that it may lead to a problem because at every point in time in fact it is so bad that sometimes in relationships the lady interprets it to be that my husband does not like my mother or the mother interprets it to be that her husband does not like me because since she got married she has not been sending money to me like she used to do before the, there can just be different things that just came from personal experiences so that is a very strong issue to discuss and it doesn't just end up with parents siblings as well all siblings are not blessed the same way they don't drive the same way but the thing is this person is still my sibling so let's assume that my brother is struggling he doesn't have a job um i may kind of have a kind of loyalty to be like okay i'll continue to support until he's able to stand on his feet if my husband has a different opinion which is a man should be able to struggle for surviving. Nobody is comfortable. Everybody tries to survive. So now, in with that perception, if we don't have a good conversation around it, that little thing that we don't talk about or higher now can cause a crack in the relationship. Because now I, f I, I feel a deep sense of betrayal that my husband will not want to help my brother like it is just that simple like it looks that simple but it can be something that will lead to a crack in the relationship that in fact sometimes that makes some women to want to be like yeah i need to go and survive by myself because if i am spending my money or if i am the one making a lot of money it won't be telling me how we should spend that money so um these are very important things to talk about it's very related to money but visiting parents handling issues like things happen and we just need to talk about them god forbid so there's some like we said oversight there are some things that you cannot even prepare enough like i said it will continue to happen that you just need to have deep conversations about things so let's assume god forbid that okay my parents um one of my siblings got divorced or loss of a husband and she has three kids and i'm thinking oh we should be able to oh we should you know because of this sibling emotion i can immediately be like ah we will sponsor the education my family will pay the attrition we will begin to do this and probably the other spouse is thinking mm, we have not even finished sponsoring our own children where will this one come in so these are hard talks like i believe husband and wife it's something to be prepared for we should be prepared for having those hard conversations as we go on hard and tough conversations i will also talk about children quickly um i know in my ships well i education is becoming better now so people are talking a lot more um we talk about children how many children do we want to have um and we can have all these dreams um someone maybe we're like okay um i want to you want three most of the time we eventually hand it up with let's see how it goes <laughs> now <laughs> so we have actually not have a real life experience until we get married that is when it dawns on you so let's assume we want to have three kids but when we were talking about three kids we were thinking they will come one after the other <laughs> well, listen, god bless me like this speaker <laughs> You know, one of my secondary school made the first time I saw a picture of our kids and she had triplets. Oh my god. Like, how do you get married?
get pregnant and you are giving birth to like even when you want to have three kids the definition of three kids have changed immediately <laughs> <laughs> it has know, become you know, for us for us during our courtship i said i want just two and then my husband said oh let's make it three i said okay okay and then we'll see. <laughs> after the first one okay, the, uh, we are first okay we are going to number three right mm. yeah and then the next one twins ah okay <laughs> at least we are now in the middle you want three i wanted two and then now two <laughs> but three kids balanced balanced <laughs> you know another issue another issue uh, is the issue of okay we want female yeah uh, we want female kids we want male kids okay we want mixed the wife is busy having uh female uh children ah the husband wants i want a male child and then these are some of those little little things they didn't the couples intending couples forget to discuss and then at the long run you see p- people a family having like nine boys one girl just because you are looking for a particular sex oh my god please continue yeah <laughs> that yeah <laughs> yeah that's really very true and that is why we're saying that we'll continue to have these conversations because we cannot have them enough mm-hmm. but as couples we should as much as it crosses our mind let us fill one another's pause so like you said some people want oh i just i want two born girl but first child comes a girl second one comes a girl and it begins to appear as if the man is not satisfied because he wanted two boys sometimes it is the woman that wanted two boys and she's pregnant and she comes in you know hmm. life is so funny <laughs> so i had two boys for my first was a boy second was a boy then when i got pregnant for the third one i i i i, I was telling god i said god i had that one two girls two twin girls <laughs> or one boy because i just thought a boy is very convenient for me like he would just be using all his brother's old clothes um they will sort out their lives we will it means that with a three-bedroom house we are convenient because the three of them we share one room forever <laughs> so wow. having another boy was just very convenient mm-hmm. and my kids are so one boy they are just praying mommy will give her to him boy in jesus name really? so wow i went for the odd yeah they just wanted a boy because they just needed a... so most of their friends are boys they have few girlfriends that are sisters of their friends but wow. they just bend more with her and they'll just like um girls can be picky um another <laughs> my second son will say i don't know why girls love pink colors everything is just pink pink oh <laughs> my god <laughs> so they just have all of those um reservations so when i got to the hospital and the ultrasound came out and the woman said well you're expecting a girl congratulations <laughs> a girl not two girls <laughs> he said a girl because i don't want a situation where somebody will tell me they need a friend they need another person like my brothers don't don't think of me so it was a girl and I'm just like, cool. So when I told the kids that you are expecting a sister, they're like, oh no. Like, didn't you say God can do anything? So they started praying. They said, God will change you, change the baby to a boy. (laughs) So I said, are you not even sure that when you see her, you really like her? They're like, no, 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 no. We want a boy. (laughs) Then I gave her to a girl. Immediately they set their eyes on her. Like, my son was just like, Mom, you're very right. We just love her and that was the end of it (laughs) so there are so many things Hmm. but we just need to have ad conversations because these things are not entirely in our hands Hmm. and what of a situation of when you want three kids four kids five kids and you have none Hmm. no baby is just forthcoming like we just need to also have conversations around it we had that before i got married because anytime anything crosses my mind that is very strange i just cross check um with my husband and 
and try to ask questions about it. So there was a day I was just like, what do we do if we don't have any kid at all in this marriage? And he's just like, um, well, we'll pray with you. I said, because me, I don't want to allow, I don't want anybody <laughs> saying, no, you did not give us a chance. Is this it? That we should talk about it. I can't be running from one hospital to another. Now. <laughs> with your husband is a part with the in-laws is another part that is a, a complete one hmm. with the society it's church another. family you know there are just so many things that um your husband will not really think anything of it's okay your in-laws may even be very great in-laws and they don't just care but the society and do you know that in cases where people have had delays most of the time even when you expect the in-laws to be the one throwing tantrums, it is actually the wife's family. And they are trying to tell you, hey, you know your husband will get another one. You better start wondering about now. If you are not careful, you will just see your husband come home on and it's like, you that you should even be my support system breaking, like they make you so, be suspicious of everything. So these are conversations to have because when we have heard it, it will help us to be able to, um, even go in prayer and be able to address issues. Another thing that I, I thought I'm going to talk about, that I want noted to talk about, is family traditions. We really don't get conscious of what people's family traditions are. Um, because we just literally live as a society, uh, we relate with one another, but we don't get very conscious about what the family tradition is in the family that we are going to. So in some families, they just have the tradition of, like in my own family, um, we had so many people who I refer to as aunties or cousins or uncles that we are not even from the same states. Like in, in truth, we are not related at all. <laughs> but I just knew that when they started coming to our house or when my parents introduced them is, uncle something auntie something <laughs> then they became a part of the family so um having somebody knock on the door and say that oh bring it home and saying she's a member of our family now is not strange to me because i grew up seeing new people different people different personalities like i'm from a christian family but my family is the single christian family in a big muslim family so having to celebrate muslim festivals i grew up with that so by the time i became an adult in fellowships and i hear people say some things about some of those traditions it's a little strange to me because i grew up seeing it as normal they are doing their own things we are doing our own thing because that's the kind of broad exposure that i had like it, it was just not a strongly judgmental environment because there are just so many people with different diversity single mothers um divorced people um just very different people now getting married to someone who is from like a strict christian family um deacon pastor families that are really organized who have their own rules and stuff like that um uh, can become a challenge if one does not have a conversation around it because it's just not in their own widest imagination that uh, you know it is it's just so many different things like that like it, it, those know, are things that know, we... i just remembered a family <clears throat> okay you know some families they are they're so used to having swallow <laughs> at night and then here is another family that swallow should be taken in the afternoon and then the man is coming the wife is coming the father the, the, um, the family of the wife they eat swallow at night the family of, of the husband they eat swallow in the afternoon in the afternoon <laughs> and then you get married and then you're like the wife is preparing swallow oh we are going to hit this swallow at night and the husband is like eh? you want me to hit how can i eat pounded yam in the night <laughs> you don't you want me to sleep <laughs> oh my god you know you know and the wife is always 
maybe she's maybe the mom the mom of the wife is like always busy and then in the afternoon they just take maybe snacks or like rice or maybe something very little or something very light in the afternoon and then she prepares that at night when she'll be on her way back from work she's going to get all those things they need to get dinner ready and then the husband is like what you know these little 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 things and during my yeah during courtship it would just never really be an issue because we think "Mm, it's okay maybe that's what they're having or that's your own problem yeah so another point that i want to add to that is sometimes we don't know how much something has formed a perception in us and we just think "Mm, it's no big deal until it becomes a reality (laughs) Hmm. So, like, for example, in my family, m- my dad doesn't come to the kitchen to do anything. Like, why will he be there? Like, I've never seen my dad carry a pot. Like, <laughs> that kind of a thing. Now, my sister was in a relationship with a guy at a time, and she went to visit their family and met the dad making a mala wow. in the kitchen. <laughs> making a mala. She was, you know, that was what I talked about. We never know how some of these things will affect us. Of course, we have conversations as men should be cooking, all of those things. Oh like God, that, we that, have that support to say <laughs> that that should be it. Men, but when she saw it real life, she ran out of the house. Like she ran out as if she saw the daddy naked. As if <laughs> she entered the bathroom. Also. So she ran out. And they were just like, you know, she like, oh, what happened? What happened? What's it? What? And that was when. She was just like, ah, how can your daddy be making a mala? It's even like, it's reasonable if he's like, she's, he's putting rice on the phone, <laughs> rice on fire or something like that still seems more amala. Like, how can a man be making? But hmm. she never knew that that has that has gone so much into her personality that it was as if something it's an abomination. outrightly wrong happened. So those are things that we need to have conversations around because when sometimes when our partner is acting out of things that we didn't really talk about, we might be judgmental and be like, but she should know, she should be aware. It's no big deal. But the thing is, what is not a big deal to you can be to another person because you don't know how much it has affected that person. And that's the reason why we need to have understanding conversation around it and be able to say, oh, how do we handle this? So another thing is ambitions, um, career goals. Like some people as a young, they already have written down what they want to become. Some people as a young man, they already have written down. This is what I want to do. I'm going to work here for this. I want to do this by 8.30. I want to have achieved this by 8.40. I want to have done this. Now, if a man and a woman get married, and you really did not have conversations around that. And you're like, oh, you're coming late from work. And she's like, I'm walking towards a promotion. <laughs> because this promotion has a meaning to our life. I need to meet these goals so that I can get promoted to the next level. And the husband is like, no, you are just not focused. You are just not thinking about your family. You are just not doing this. Now, while that may appear true in your own space, to another person, it's like, that i'm working all this career that i'm running ahead all this next level that i want to get to is because of my family i will be able to take you around the world i'll be able now you are, you both have good intentions but these good intentions are crossing paths and there's a need to really talk about it so if we don't have smooth quick conversations around this thing then it can become a very big deal which if not handled properly um can sometimes pull some home apart because some, when people start going through divorce or there are reasons why you need to come in and talk to them about their marriage and how to resolve conflicts sometimes you listen to people and you're just like this is really not a big deal if you will yeah, both yeah. just really talk about it and decide okay This is how, where I am going to move a bit in my own um, aspirations. This is where you are going to move a bit in your own aspirations and um, work things out. So ambition, goals, there are things to talk about. Um, You can't just say, uh, as a woman, the best you can be is to satisfy your husband and take care of your children. 
well, that may be true in a sense, but she's also a woman listening to, being motivated, guiding herself by the fact that I am a person. Mm. I have my own life to also live. Like my life is not just as a mother and as a wife. I have a life outside of that and I have a purpose to fulfill. So can we have a talk around how do you fulfill being a mother, being a wife and still achieve your purpose in life or things you feel God has called you into. So having those conversations will help us to um, boycott so many th- conflicts that will ensue from just um, each person trying to make their own point and just trying to pursue what they have um, decided before marriage. Um, another soft routine is church. I'm an Anglican, you're a Baptist. Uh, of course, you say, oh, after marriage, you start going to your husband's church. But what if I just never blended with that church? What if that church is not really what we need or what if we need to change that the church has just become a tradition not a place where we get fellowship so those are so many things that uh, we need to talk about and i will also say that there is one thing that as christians of course we cannot talk about enough (laughs) and that is the matter of sex after marriage of course you, you are not expected to have tried that out before marriage so you can only experience this experience it after marriage how is it different for someone who is getting married as a virgin as compared with somebody who has experienced other people before how is it different from somebody who thinks that um all of sex is all of that is portrayed outside that oh it is just this thing that takes you to the moon and you are there for a day to come back tomorrow and so many other things like that so those are things to talk about those are things to address those are things to look at from a better perspective and um god will continue to help us like i believe having these conversations with is opening our minds to oh did we talk about it are we thinking about this and how do we handle this if it comes up thank you very much ma in fact the issue of the career you know sometimes like you said at the beginning of this discussion talking about even the issue of jobs you know probably before they go married the the husband might be working and the wife might also be working and then getting married <laughs> getting married the husband wants to tell the wife please stop working i want you to take care of our kids i want you to take care of our home and then here is <laughs> here is a wife a woman she's the first child and then she wants to earn more so she can support her family members her siblings her mom and here is the man telling her oh no i don't want it to work just stay at home take care of the kids let me make the money and then you know when, they, they, when, when they were still cutting they will be like ah, it's okay it's okay it's okay i'll continue to work okay <laughs> and then uh getting to, getting into the marriage things begin to change or it might even be the other way around the wife might not be working the husband is working and then they get married and the husband is like oh do you expect me to be the only one bringing money into this home oh no we don't do it like that and the wife is like where i'm coming from it's it's my dad that does most of the things Uh, anything Mm -hmm. finances he does the and then things change and then things fall apart (laughs) and then you begin to see the other side of bro (laughs) you're like really so my husband can be this angry (laughs) so i've heard someone say that when does the issue of uh, my wife should stop working become a conversation and i'm like well it can become a conversation so i'm going to give a personal example before we got married i was working i was a teacher a chemistry teacher and i love my job i love my students and well i love my workplace but you know challenges happen especially when you work in a big school Mm -hmm. and i was working things were moving fine i was pursuing another degree then it was becoming a challenge of balancing everything then at a point um you know, sometimes you are doing a job that the complaints go beyond the income. 
<laughs> that sometimes the complaints outweigh the income. So, but then I didn't stop working because my philosophy is even if you want to change job, um, keep working at the job you have currently because it's easier to get another job while working than to get a job when you have no job at all. Mm. That is just my own personal philosophy because I believe when you're working, you're it's easy for you to connect to people. You can say, this is what I'm doing and stuff like that. It's different from where I currently do nothing. <laughs> Before you know it, you adapt to the life of um, things like that. Mm. But there is, uh, so at a point, my husband was like, oh, maybe you should stop working. But in my own case, when I stopped working, I started working for his company because he has a personal company. The only difference is that um i have much more authority over my time there are days that i i need to go out at all i'm just at home and there are days that i'm going out so because um yes things like that so but there's something i always tell people sometimes when they're like oh quit working and that sometimes a woman at home the homemaker does much more than somebody who has gone out to work because being at home, you just have all this guilt around you and stuff like that. And there are times that, so I believe that having a conversation around it, it should be unique to each couple, but it should not be enforced. Like, I don't believe a wife should force his wife um, to stop working if the wife wants to work. I believe it is having a conversation around, this is the problem, how do we resolve it? So if the problem is you are not having enough time for the family, how do we resolve that? Can a nanny help? Can having a housemaid help? Um, and some other things. And I've had one very tough auntie like that. She was like, well, I will stop working. You will just need to start paying me my salary. So the husband agreed to that negotiation and she was getting the full salary she was getting while going to work wow. by staying at home. So for her, it is like, it's a better life for me now. <laughs> I'm doing less, but earning as much as I was earning before. But not everybody can have um, that kind of agreement. So in that case, it communicates to me a sense that the husband is like, I can buy this job. I can buy your job. I'll pay you what your job is paying you. I just need you to be here for me, doing this for me. So um, so there are things to converse about. It may be like a, re a need to change your job. So um for example if i'm a banker and that is not giving me time to spend time with my family because i go out very early in the morning i'm coming late in the evening can i change to another profession can i go to school to do something and or maybe take up like an auditing job with an educational institution so i'm still doing my accounting job but working in a different situation where they have like a strict you know, age before you know another you know. thing <laughs> about this issue of job okay for example the husband is an engineer and then the wife is a teacher a teacher right from time and then before the before the marriage the wife was a teacher and then getting into the marriage the husband comes up with the idea of yes you can why can't you go for a banking job after why will you go why will you be a teacher like it's a low grade uh, yeah, yeah, not hanging as much. To, from being a teacher to being a banker, uh, and the wife is like, "You want me to be a banker?" I oh, know that's a serious issue. Yeah, those are actually real things to talk about. And but um, if we all live in love, if husband and wife understands the fact that whatever thing we are pursuing is for us, is for us, is for our children, then I believe that resolving such com conflict um will be easy after having had to have conversations around it because um it can be challenging yeah it can be challenging sometimes some demands are made like um change your job change your career change this and that but it, it can be both ways so but conversing about it i believe is the best way to address it and not stopping education just continue to learn like and like you always say learn relearn unlearn. yeah those are very very important yeah
Wow, wow, wow. What a wonderful, interesting, and insightful uh, discussion we've had today. Thank you very much, Ma. So one of the take-home that we have today is that oversights are not intentional. There are things you did not plan for. There are things you mistakenly or uh, you did not discuss before starting the marriage journey and they are numerous in fact we we, we, we we could not we can't even finish them all in the discussion in fact for other couples it might be something different entirely yes, yes, but for for the ones that we discussed today these are just some of them some of those things maybe the general ones that really really causes conflicts that causes misunderstanding, that causes even divorce sometimes in marriages. Thank you very much, Ma. We really appreciate your thank being you with so us on the platform today. <laughs> and to all thank our, you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, th- to all our viewers, thank you very much for tuning in today, for watching us. Thank you, Mrs. Olatunji. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. And till we come your way again in the next two weeks. Now is we're going to be having the discussions every two, two weeks. So till I come your way again in the next two weeks by God's grace. Keep watching Jinsei Matters with Roy. Till then, stay safe, be fine, and take care. Bye.